All right, hello, wine drinking people. Time for more of what I've had to drink yesterday, and our friends, uh, the new importers of Champagne Dutes, were in. And uh, this is a um, Champagne House that's owned by Louis Roeder. You would just think they'd be brought in by Maison Mark and Domains, but you know, it's a big, important company. And uh, Dutes is a much smaller brand, so they felt like it would be better with a smaller uh, importer and a smaller distributor, and a different one sometimes. Uh, the big guys just focus on what the majority of the work they got to do is. And if you import Louis Rotor, that's your main job, you know, selling Rotor or Champagne, rather, you know. So Champagne Dudes kind of got overlooked. And this is a brand that's mostly in restaurants in Europe and uh, fine wine shops. And uh, the Rosé and the Brut Classic, really uh, ex excellent champagnes, both of them, uh, three years on the lees. The Brut Classic's got that beautiful lemon drop candy, green apple, lovely freshness here, some toasty biscuit-like aromas. It's 2011 base. There's nothing on the bottle to indicate this. One of my pet peeves about champagne. I'd love to see the disgorgement date on all the bottles so we'd know the approximate age of the product. You can tell by how far the cork pops out when it does mushrooms uh, when you open it up. This wine's got a lovely minerality to it, that chalky seashell kind of nuance to the finish, and that gives you that tongue tingly impression. Same thing acidity does, but uh, just lengthens that on your tongue. An excellent example of a brute classic champagne. The rosé, which... Um, uh, got nine grams of residual sugar, just like the Brut. Seems a little bit fruitier. And um, this wine has got some nice red raspberry, uh, some nice uh, strawberry fruits, and pretty floral nuance. I love rosés for that. Uh, and then really nice freshness, salty, briny, minerally notes to the finish. Creamy palate. Uh, excellent rosé at $66. And then on to some small, uh, well, some smaller brands, maybe, I don't know, Alphonse Milo, a very important brand in uh, France. We don't really know this La Moussière uh, vineyard, the very important uh, vineyard in Sancerre, supposedly. They have a hotel, they have a store, a restaurant, and uh, the family's been here since 1513. Wow. Um, advisor to Louis the Fourteenth, Louis the Fifteenth, Louis the Sixteenth, <coughs> dead. I don't know if they killed the advisor, but Louis the Sixteenth beheaded. Anyways, very clean wine. This wine's got that pink grapefruit, chalky minerally notes, uh, white flowers, and uh, just maybe a bit of the green herbs you get from that Sauvignon Blanc but in a cool climate. But uh, this wine's showing lovely balance here, very clean, a good amount of ripe fruit on the tongue with that smooth, creamy texture and that savory pink grapefruit Jolly Rancher note at the end. Excellent juice. The Alphonse Milo La Moussière Sancerre Rosé. You notice that limestone, that Kimmeridgian soil you get from uh, Sancerre here. And uh, these wines spend time in big oak, not small barriques. So you don't get that vanilla. This wine's got a beautiful bouquet of watermelon and rasp uh, raspberry Jolly Rancher candy with rose petal floral notes. Really juicy, light redberry fruit on the palate with a nice zest and minerality. Pretty floral notes and a nice creamy texture. Bone dry finish here. Excellent juice at 30 3150. All right, Decelle Ville, uh, Chardonnay from Bourgogne. Decelle Villa? I think it's the name of that. Anyways, Oliver Decelle is uh, the gentleman that owns this, and he's uh, bought a few hectares in Burgundy, and this wine has your classic Bourgogne Chardonnay, a nice flinty minerally note to the lemon drop candy, green apple fruit. It's from two parcels in Polini, so a good zip code for Chardonnay, and uh, a nice amount of that tree fruit I was showing on the palate, and a nice minerality leading into that finish, a nice definition, and a very good little Bourgogne Chardonnay. Thirty-one fifty. Wow, Bourgogne Chardonnay is getting expensive. It's from... Vineyards and Polini. It's going to be more expensive. Chateau Jean Ferry Saint Emilion. Wow. One of the three originally Grand Cru Class A classified wines in um, La Dominique, uh, Domaine de Cheval Blanc, and um, Jean Ferry, supposedly the original three. And uh, this wine was taken away its uh, classification and given it back in 2012. So the only Chateau in Saint Emilion that I know of that this happening to. And uh, 2004, they've been owned by Oliver de Cell since then, and uh, these guys um, making brilliant wine here. 14% alcohol, so very big style. This 2010, a great vintage, and I don't want to say the first thing they did was fire Michelle Roland when uh, they bought the property, but that's one of the first things they did. Michelle was there in the past, and they said, we want to make a different style of wine, and one that's Maybe they just didn't want to pay Michel Roland. He's pretty expensive. Anyways, this wine's got wonderful concentration, a good amount of plum and dark cherry fruit, silky tannins, wonderful balance here, and uh, 
Really, I mean, I love these 2010s. They are going to be around a long time. This is a great little value. It's $75 to have a, a similar terroir to La Dominique and to Cheval Blanc. It'd still be under $100. Man, there is still a lot of value left in Bordeaux. Most excellent mm -hmm. juice. All right, the Massa Mio wines next. And uh, this is uh, one of the cult wines of the south of France, of Roussillon, the altitude 433 and uh, 150 acres of Grenache. And uh, they've got some other indigenous varietals planted there, La Lon Pelou, a clone of Grenache, or a mutation of that, and uh, this is a blend of those, and it's uh, one of the new cult wines of the south of France. This wine's got a very pretty bouquet of dried herbs, flowers, smoked meats, really smooth and round on the tongue, nice berry and plum fruit, those dried flowers and herbs coming through on the finish, really nice meaty quality and excellent juice. And then the Maori, which, uh, you know, some people relate Maori to um, um, Madeira because it's matterized, and um, I don't think it's anything like Madeira. I mean, it's a fortified wine. It's been around for a long time and 19% uh, alcohol, mostly Grenache. This is old stock. You know, obviously they bought the, the winery in two, 2004. So 1985 is something they're just working through. They put this stuff outside to mature. Just the total opposite things you would do to most fine wines. And, you know, I, I think they're interesting wines with chocolate or fudge dessert. Um, you know, dried fruits, raisins, you get this diesel kind of component out of this wine and not nearly as acidic as Madeira. So to me, it just doesn't work as an oxidized wine. But, you know, I can see how why people like it. You know, it does have its redeeming qualities. But for $75, a price tag just a little too steep for me. I'm your host, Andrew Lampassoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.